everybody. We're going to do a demonstration around universal analytics in GA4. Some of you might have seen this trick before. And part of the reason why I chose this one is because it's usually the one that when I show people, they're like, whoa, this is so cool. I'm blown away by this one. I think this is fairly common is that people set up GA4, they want to love it, but then they still go back to universal analytics to get everything they're looking for, all the old reports. And so for most users, that's the case is that we want GA4 to work, but we still go back to old reliable because our client reporting is based on it because we're used to it because honestly, the universal analytics interface is way more thoughtfully designed than GA4. I think that, you know, I, I'll give you an example. And this is sort of an insider thing is that I I was a Google Analytics partner for five years and I would go out there every year for five years. I went out to Google's Mountain View campus and was part of the Google Analytics Summit. And while I was at the summit, I would walk down the hallway and people would say, hey, can you take a look at this thing? We're developing a new interface for Google Analytics. What do you think about it? How do you use Google Analytics? They were asking me questions. And I'd say, well, I really like, you know, I like looking at conversion. I like looking at traffic. I like looking at page views. And they're like, okay, cool. So they took all that information and they tabulated it. And then they built what I consider to be a beautiful interface. Now, the good thing is that with GA4, the thing that that, that is a savior of it is that they allow us to edit the interface to look like whatever you want it to look like, right? So my question to you is, what if I showed you how to make GA4 look like universal? Would that be interesting to you? So here's here's an example of universal. Now, anybody who's taken my course knows that I go through this thing step-by-step step and I explain to you what I look at and, and we go through the interface. Um, audience, that's the one that we look at when, we ever, when we're first starting out, but then eventually we sort of like, it doesn't really change much, so we don't look at that often. Acquisition behavior conversions, the ABC reports, we look at these things all the time, like all day, every day. That's that's pretty much what I live for, right? Well, when they introduced it in Universal Analytics, they call it the lifecycle reports and they give it a bunch of different names. Things like, you know, in here, the landing page report, which is what every SEO person goes to, that was buried. That, that didn't exist for probably a solid year in GA4. So if you started using GA4 in 2021, you might be like, okay, well, that never, I never even saw that thing. I didn't know that it existed. Okay. Um, they don't have landing pages. I'm not going to use that new system. Well, the good news is they did roll it out pretty quietly and it is there, but if you want to get to it, it takes a lot of steps. So I'm going to show you how to eliminate those steps inside the new system. This is my, I just made this and GA4 actually, my, my menu says, universal analytics, and I have audience acquisition behavior and conversions. Okay. So how does that work? How did that happen? Right? Well, basically I, I was able to take many of our old favorites and I went side by side. I had multiple tabs open. I was looking at universal. I was looking at GA4 and just trying to make them look the same. Okay. And so I want to show you what that looks like now, where we can find our universal ones. Okay. So let's, that, this is, this is the universal analytics one. So how did I do this and what does it mean? So first of all, Notice here that we have audience acquisition behavior conversion. Again, I painstakingly went through and I went to the universal one and I said, okay, well, in the audience report, you see how they all, they have, there's there's just a, it's like a rat's nest here, right? That we wanted to simplify this. You don't need 15 menu items. I never use any of these things. Some of these things aren't even really enabled, but it would be nice, don't you think, to have, you know, the equivalent of like, okay, what browser is, some, is on there? What network are they on? Okay. Now, whatever data is available inside Universal or inside GA4, that is now something that you can create a menu item from. So, see how we have browser and OS. I was able to create browser and OS and put it into here. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at like what's the next next one is network. Now, service provider. This 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 report. Now, here's the thing you'll notice with with Universal Analytics is that they only added and they never cleaned up. They never removed anything, right? So the service provider has been gone forever. You haven't been able to see service provider in a long time. So this report is pretty much worthless, yet it still remains and sits inside the interface, which we don't really want, right? We don't really need that. So I'm just going to do us the favor and not have a network report in there because service provider, that dimension is has not been set for years due to privacy reasons. Now, it used to be my favorite, one of my favorite things for diagnostics, but you know, you look in here, you see mobile. Okay. So there's an overview, there's a device report. Would it be interesting for us to see things like mobile device? Like what device are they on? Yeah, I think so. Right. So 
one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this browser OS report. And the way that I configured this was I just took the report that was normally the browser report right here. This is the vanilla browser report. And I made it so that it just, I got rid of a bunch of stuff in there. So I customized it using this little customized report icon. And I was able to say, I want only to focus on the browser. Okay. Right there. Now, but if you look at it, I focused on the browser, but I didn't do anything else. So what if we wanted to create a report called device category, device model? What if we wanted to make that report available in our navigation? Wouldn't that be interesting to do that, to, to do the device stuff? So you need to see the devices and not have to go and find it, not have to click like six times. Okay, so here's what we can do. So what we're going we're gonna to do here is I'm going to take this, I'm going to, the browser one, browser and OS is going to remain the same. I'm not going to do anything with that one. I'm going to save this as a new version, but I'm just going to select device category. And I'm going to make that the default. And I'm going to apply that to this report and just see what we get, okay? Now, something that I always recommend doing is before you like go out and, do a permanent change or save this thing. Just see what you get, okay? Don't be afraid to just see what you get. That's what the phase we're at right now with analytics with GA4. We don't know what it's going to do. Honestly, if you've taken my class, you know that I'm like, ah, you know, what? I, yeah, whatever. Um, it, it is, you know, can be frustrating, right? To, to, to not know what something's going to do. Just instead of getting frustrated with it, just realize, okay, yeah, I don't know what this is going to do. So, so apply it, see what you get. This data device category is super useful. There is a corollary over here when we look at um, when we look at devices. So this is the device mobile device info. Um, um, so you go into here. This is the device category. So you can either call this mobile overview or device category, but it looks pretty much the same. And this is this is the same same website. So I got forty three thousand fifty one. Another thing to do is just to compare it. Similar. This is the, usually the users is because there's there's fewer users in GA four, and the reason why is because um, they're better at, at attributing users. So there's not as many because they're better at consolidating them. They're better at identifying that this is a unique or that this is a person. Okay. Okay. So this is cool device category. So we're going to save this thing as a new report. We call this device. And one thing to note here, and this is very, very important, more important than you'd want it to be is that if you don't, if you name that, you can never change this report name. So you have to make sure you nail that. Okay, this is one of the few things that you can't change later. Now, if you don't like the metrics that are in there, we can always change that, but you can't change the report name. You have to actually delete it and then redo it. Okay, so we're going to save this as device category. And then what I like to do, because this isn't in my menu yet, I'm going to show you that part next. That's going to be the final part of what I show you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you now how to add multiple ones. So we have one called device category. That's the name of this report. We're going to do another one. We're going to change it to device model. Set that as our default, apply that. And okay, so the device model, that doesn't look right, does it? That is not accurate. That is, I guess, no, that is wrong. Um, let's see what platform looks like. So this is, again, we're just, we're just messing around a little bit. So platform web, that's, yeah. So um, I'm not sure why that's doing that for device model. See, like the model here is the actual system. Okay, so I, th I think I think the problem here, folks, and this is this is a learning thing, is that we need to um, we want to filter this, and we want to filter out. We want to say um, mobile. See, if is um, let's see what the what the way to filter it is. Device category, and then we should just say mobile. Okay, we can do tablet here. I am honored that somebody watched me on a smart TV, but that's not the point here, right? So, so we're dividing it by model. We have iPhone, iPad, Firefox for Android. Now, again, this isn't this doesn't seem as rich, but it's also um, it's not bad. You know, it's, it's twenty four ninety eight versus twenty three fifty six. So these numbers are fairly accurate, right? They're not giving me as many options. Maybe it's because of the device category or something like that. But I think this is enough to go on. So here's our device category. We had to filter it for that to work. And I'm going to save this as a new report. I'm going to call it device category. Okay. Okay. Now, one little trick that I have before I show you how to add this to the menu is if I want to apply this to a different account that I have, 
let's see how we can do that. So this is a trick that I that worked for me. Somebody told me it doesn't work anymore, um, but I want to see if it works. So this report, I went through the time, I put device category, I created a definition where this is the default option, and then I filtered it. To do that on every single client account, or for you to go do that, it's like it's sort of annoying, right? Um, it's it's prohibitive. You might not even want to touch this thing if that's the case. So what if I go into, let's say the account that we're doing for GA4 cohort here. Um, um, I think the Google tag version is the one that where we have universal. So I'm just going to pop over here and go into my account. Now it says permission denied. Uh, okay, so I think they closed the, the loop where I could just switch between accounts and see my report. So um, that's frustrating. So it used to be that I could just go in there and and switch between accounts and it would just work. Now they seem to be changing that. It might have to be something where we have to manually put in our account ID. Um, of course, that report. This was my trick. This was the thing where I was going to give everybody access and I can give you the URLs and do that. So um, let me just see. So you might be able to get by with putting like the property ID in there and changing that. Um, we'll geek out with that in the questions and answers, but I want to show you how to add this to our menu. So we look at our reports. And again, we're showing universal analytics. Now my audience report, you're like, Jeff, what happened to the ones that you just created? Why isn't device in there? The final step is that you need to go into your library and you're going to want to create a new collection if you have the space to do it. Mine already exists. And I'm going to go into my universal analytics reports and I'm going to edit that. I'm going to get rid of that generic browser one. But then if you if you scroll all the way towards the bottom, you should see the reports that you created. So I created one called device category. And I swear I created one called device name. Um, let's just pull device category over there. And did I not resave the name there? I thought that I did. So I'm just going to save this thing and then see. Um, what I did wrong there. So this is where it gets to be frustrating is that it's, it is a decent amount of manual work. The good news is that, and, and this is something that we want to work on with our SOPs is we want to work on the point where we can make it so that it's step-by-step -step a checklist. So you could hire somebody to do this versus having to do it all yourself. Like, Hey, do this setting, this setting, this setting. So honestly, part of the reason, part of the way that we're going to start doing that is by this live demo. Um, people, we're going to take the steps for these ones and we're going to, we're going to make it work. And then we're going to keep on adding from there. So it looks like I did change. I didn't change the name. So um, my fault on that one. And again, this is the problem with the names that it says device category. And unless you change the name of it, then you're going to be, then you're stuck with it. Right. So it's just there. So I'm going to have to call this device model. I guess I neglected to do that or I did it and it didn't save it. So device model. Now, when we go back to our library, um, we're going to have to go into the report library. And we're going to go in here and we're going to make it so that now we have the device model. And I'm going to, as well as what I'm going to change here is I'm going to add in the first device category because that was the proper one. I'm going to remove this one and then I'm going to go device model. Okay. Save that to the current collection. And now we are building towards having what we need here. So if I look in my report category, it's there, frozen in time as my device category. Device model, it's there and it's handy. Now this is, you know, in some ways it could be an improvement over GA Universal because these ones still, you have to click around here to find things, to find whatever data you can, to find these sub menus. You won't have to do that if you can find all the different dimensions that are in there. So in theory, you could have, well, not even in theory, in practice, you'll have a tighter audience report than you could ever have in Universal because Universal has just so many of these things that are stupid, that don't really make sense. Um, one thing I haven't found a solution for yet, everybody, just so you know, is like lifetime value now is in the explorations. I don't know how to add an exploration necessarily into the main reports. Cohort analysis, same thing. User Explorer, the equivalent of that, is now in the exploration. A lot of these exploration things, user flow is, is now in the explorations. Even stuff like reverse goal path, those things would be, you know, they're, they're here in Universal. They just happen to be in the explorations.